generally, we are offering different types of outlets. What I'm presenting here are just an extraction out of the fiber optic outlets and the possibilities they do offer. So we have three different applications. On the left hand side, there you can see a hybrid outlet. So if you doing an installation and you want to have a combination of fiber optic and copper infrastructure, if you have hybrid cables for example, um, then this is the right choice. Then the one in, in the middle is the one when you have a pure fiber optic installation, just splicing. And the right one, we call it as well the easy one, is made for pre-terminated cable or even if you have a field connector. So roughly an overview about um, what are we talking about here. So you can see that the, the outlets are really small. So the bending radius, first of all, is only 15 millimeters. That means those outlets are optimized for the low bending fiber types, which are mainly used in the customer premise area. So if you go to an outside plant area, for example, you have a lot of standard G652.D is the fiber type called. And there the bending radius needs to be minimum of 25, 30 millimeters. In general, you can say with those types of fibers, the higher the bending radius, the more long-term stable it is. If you go to the customer premise area, then most of the times you use that low bending fiber types because of installation circumstances. You don't have every time that 40 millimeter bending radius or 30 millimeters. So this is the reason why we have this 15 millimeters with the new fiber types. In general, you can put in different types of connectors, LCX, E2000, SC, so all the common ones, um, and you can have a total of four fibers in that, in that outlet. You can as well see that the connectors, the adapters, are dust protected, so that means if the installation is once made and maybe the outlet is not used at the moment, then these dust covers are closed and no dust can enter the box so that you don't have problems during a longer time when it is not installed. Then maybe a few words to the hybrid outlet. As well you can see uh, same fiber type, 50 mm bending radius. I guess maybe important to mention as well. Those outlets can be used for two fiber types, 600 micron and 900 micron. Both is possible. Um, the difference here is that we have a separate splice tray for the fiber area and on the bottom you can enter with a copper cable and then connect directly to those RJ45 modules. Maybe one additional thing I guess important here as well, you have the opportunity or the possibility to uh, color code those entries so you can as well easily identify where is the copper part and where is the fiber optic part. In Max you can have three um, slots here, so either you have two fiber optic or three fiber optic, or you have one copper and one fiber optic, so you can mix that like you want to have it. Then we come to the smallest outlet, even size wise. This is the, I would really say, the flattest design on surface mount uh, outlets which I have seen actually in, in the market. And why? I mean, the reason is quite clear. You don't have a splice area. There is just a small room to store some fibers if you enter with a pre-terminated cable or you enter with a, with a FO field connector. So that means this makes this outlet really attractive because it's quite small, quite flat. It's not you know, disturbing you into, in, in the living room, for example, if the installation is there. And um, yeah, in combination with the FO field, I would say an ideal solution to do a really quick rollout uh, where no splicing is needed. <coughs> exactly, this is um, the next product which will be launched mid of the year. I mean, the multi mode version of that connector is available right now. I as well have brought some samples um, for those of you which haven't seen them yet. I will pass one connector around um, because of you know, it's a bit hard to show how easy it is to install in such an audience. I as well have prepared um, to show you a movie, how the installation is planned um, for the fiber optic field connector. Um, mid of the year we will as well extend that family and will introduce the single mode connector, which is the one for the public networks. Multi-mode is more the one for the LAN cabling, I would say, uh, in two types of connectors, the LC one 
and the SC1. Just roughly as well, if you take a look on the cost side, I mean, a pigtail splice, if you calculate all the <coughs> capex as well inside that, I mean, you need to calculate, you need the splice machine, you need uh, the understanding, you need the training of that, then we roughly talk about 10,000 euros, you know, if you, if you buy the machine, if you do the training, if you calculate everything, of course you can the machine use the machine several times, but um, if you once start to design, are, am I investing in a new splice machine or should I do a fiber optic field connection? You can see just in, 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 as a differentiation, the tools what you need here are the standard tools like dismantling tools and everything. So we talk about roughly 1,500 euros. And as well, the time to terminate such a connector is below one minute. If you do that with a splice machine, it takes a little bit longer, so roughly five, maybe the newer ones, three minutes, but even above that. And I guess the big difference is to do a really proper splicing, you need to be a kind of an expert on fiber optic. Because otherwise, you splice different fiber types together, you need to recalibrate again. If you don't know how to handle that, it's getting complicated. Um, here, you don't need to be have the really fiber optic uh, expert. Of course, you need to know how to handle a fiber, but you don't need to have the detailed understanding of all the equipment around. So basically, um, we call it tool-less assembly because of there is no special tool needed to terminate that connector. You just need the standard dismantling tool, what, so everything what is needed to prepare the cable, but for the connector itself, nothing special is needed. It is really fast and secure to assemble. We will see this as well in the, in the, in the movie afterwards. Um, it simplifies as well the logistics because you have one connector which can be used for pigtails, for patch cords and the different fiber types like low bending fibers and standard fiber types. Um, because of the performance the connector is offering, it is an alternative to do splicing, especially in the in-house area, in the fiber in the home area. Um, cost saving I already explains and of course it is as well part of the R&D QPP program. So Warranty is as well uh, a topic here. <coughs> Maybe roughly shortly the features about that connector. So basically the multi-mode connector is that we call it grade BM3, which means a maximum of 0 0.5 dB uh, insertion loss measured each to each and a return loss of 35 dBs. And if you could now go to the single mode, there you reach the typical results of 0 0.25 dB insertion loss, 0 0.5 max. And important is the return loss is as well higher than 60 dB, which means APC, so you don't have the problem of reflections inside the network. You can use it for 600 and 900 micron compact as well as tight tube fiber types. You can as well have a direct assembly on 250 micron. So if you need, if you have a, I don't know, a problem in the network or a problem occurs, you can also use that connector as a kind of a repair kit. Um, you can do that directly on the loose tube fiber. The strain relief for patch cords is covering a range of 1.4 millimeters up to 3 millimeters. So this is, I would say, roughly all the cable patch cables which are in the market. And as well, you can reuse the connector. So if you once have a problem in terminating them because of handling issues, you can re-terminate up to five times. Um, and of course, you can use as well, if you have an existing cleaver, you can use that one. So what does it mean? Um, you can see that this is a little bit the standard side on that. So there are new standards in preparation, especially for the field connectors. And um, we are in that committees, we know what is going on there. And the message here should be that with that development of the field connector, we are now as well respecting those standards. So we are fulfilling them. There are a lot of connectors on the market. I mean, field termination is not a brand new technology, but I guess the difference is in the performance and as well in the handling and the reliability of the connector. So. Where can you use those connectors? You can use it, of course, in the, in the outlets for fiber in the home installations. If you take the mini outlet, for example, fiber the desk could be a topic, as well repair kits. So if you have a damage in the data center, for example, where a connector is broken on the patch cord, you can use that one as well as a repair kit. Um, 
you can as well do your own cable length, you know, this is always maybe a topic, especially in data centers, and we normally you all the pre-terminated cables, but if you have an issue with the length, too less or too long, as well you can do your own uh, patch cords on site. So you can see I've also given the samples around, this is uh, how you receive the connector. You can use it, as I said, for pig tails and patch cords. So now what we are showing is how to prepare the pig tail. Then remove the primary coating. Then afterwards, you do the cleave, zero or eight degree, depending on multi mode or single mode. And that's basically what you need to do. And then afterwards, you're just inserting those pig tails. Put a bit of force on it to make sure that the fiber is properly aligned. And then you press the R and M button, and then the connection of both fibers are already done. The rest, what you need to do is put that clamp forward and remove it, and then the strain relief on the pigtail is as well done. That's all. For the patch, it is more or less the same. The cable preparation is comparable to the pigtail. The only thing is you have aramid fibers around where you have to do the strain lift, so that means the aramid fibers needs to be on the connector and then you do those screwable um, crimping sleeve around and then as well the strain lift in the patch cord is done. <coughs>